All right, everybody. Well, hey, welcome to our Mass Media Podcast Mastermind on Wednesday night. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, honored to have our special guest today. I think you guys better grab a pen and a paper to take some notes out because this guy is kicking ass and ticket names. He's doing amazing things and uh, he's going to share his knowledge with you guys tonight. He is the host of the Practice of the Practice podcast. Uh, a friend of mine, a fellow New Media Summit icon influence. We got a chance to hang out some in Orlando at PodFest before all this craziness happened. Aren't you glad you went to Orlando, Joe? Oh my gosh, I I yeah. It, it was a little bit weird where there's like a lot of sanitizer and nobody wearing masks yet, but it's like, you know, no one, you know, really shaking hands, elbow bumping, which is fine because I'd hurt my wrist. So it was sort of like good to have just some elbow bumping. I wasn't the weird one that didn't want to shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, for you guys that don't know who Joe is, uh, he has a number one podcast for counselors, wellness professionals and coaches. He's a TEDx speaker as well that has been featured in Forbes Money and Good Magazine. And podcasting has changed his life and his practice. And that's why he's also started the podcast launch school. So we're honored to have uh, Joe join us from Michigan today. Joe Zanuck. So Joe, hey man, glad to have you. Welcome as always, like we were just mentioning. Uh, thank God for podcasts, right? Seriously. I mean, I feel like, I don't know how your business is doing, but it's, it's like, there. it's so easy to have multiple streams of income when you have a podcast. We're going to talk about that. Um, and all these people who have been therapists or coaches that were in my community, now they're like, oh, we should have been listening to you and doing a podcast. So we weren't just doing in-person counseling. Um, and so now it's like, yeah, we, we're on screens all the time. Welcome to our world for the last, like, what, you know, 10 years. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I've been doing virtual events for the last five as we transition to get away from doing hotel events and hotel trainings and, and that stuff to really kind of make it open up for everybody out there. You know, not just being a local thing, but truly taking the business international we're doing. So, yeah, thank God for podcasts, thank you for live streaming and, and, and making everything, uh, the work out there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let me get this screen share going and um, let me know how soon you want me to just dive right into the content. Let's dive in. Let's dive into it, man. Right. And you want to, uh, if people are asking questions, do you want to be interrupted with the questions or wait till the yeah, end? Yeah, that would be people? awesome. Uh, you know, especially if I'm talking about something and, you know, people want to know more. Um, this presentation is probably half an hour. I'll have time at the end also. Cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, jump in, interrupt me. It's totally fine. It's not like I got to just stay on, on task with this. If we don't get through all the slides then you know, we hopefully give you some good stuff as well. So uh, is that all? Cool. I'm going okay, to drop off the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop off the video. I'm still here. So cool. I'm just let it just all be Joe. All right. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks Scott. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited for all of you that are here. So I want to just start with, have you ever thought, uh, is this all that I'm made for? And so you might be asking yourself, what if I could reach more people or have a greater impact? Uh, is this all I have in me? Uh, those are questions that I was asking myself. Uh, maybe something's calling you uh, into more innovation, influence, impact. Um, and if you said yes, I would love for you to say yes in the comments, just to, to hear that you're thinking these things. It's encouraging to see that come through uh, in the comments. So I want to take you through just a little bit of where I've been since 2012. So in 2012, I was working at a community college as a therapist. I started a blog and a podcast and I wanted options. I knew that I was going to tap out the amount that I could make at this community college unless I became a supervisor or maybe a vice president. But that, you know, was highly unlikely for, for me um, to want to you know, work more hours. So I started this blog and this podcast. And, you know, over that period of time, uh, we've grown that podcast to 70 to 100,000 listens per month. We also started a thing called Podcast Launch School, and we do done-for-you podcast services. I'm a psychologist, a dad, a husband, and our plan was to take a road trip this fall, uh, but we'll see how that ends up going. We were going to live out of national parks for the next year and just podcast out of there. And most recently, my five and eight-year-old um, have joined the podcasting world. We just started recording podcasts. We have uh, eight family podcasts where they're just talking about coronavirus, they're talking about family life, they're talking about going on this road trip eventually. Um, so now it's a, a family business as well. But here's what my time That's awesome, was. man. That's it awesome. is, you know, like, and I was kind of hinting at it and they were like, we don't want to do a podcast. And then as soon as the mics came in the mail and they realized that they could just say whatever they wanted, and it's like the cutest thing, but <laughs> they have some deep questions. Like my eight-year-old was saying to our five-year-old, how are you doing with coronavirus? Like, what's scary for you? Uh, how are you getting through it? And I'm like, this is incredible to hear these two little kids asking the questions that we're asking them and we're talking to them. 
Um, so it's just, it's just really cool. Uh, so this is my timeline, just so you know where I've been. And I'm not going to go through my whole resume, but I think it's important that, you know, when we see people like Scott or myself that may be at a point of success that you want to be at, to realize that it didn't just happen overnight. And that's one of the big takeaways we're going to talk about with podcasting. I was working in nonprofits, the court system, community mental health, foster care, uh, after I finished my master's degree, and then was at that community at college I was referencing earlier. And then I was hiring extra clinicians within that practice, uh, eventually left that community college in 2015. And then was, you know, growing practice of the practice, which was my podcast. And when I, I left that full-time job uh, in 2015, that's really when things started to grow. Uh, in 2019, we started those Done For You uh, podcast services, and we just launched Podcast Launch School in April. And uh, I, I like to start, I'm super transparent about this. Um, Pat Flynn, for me, is someone that is just so amazing. And the way that he just showed his monthly income reports, I've been doing that since the very beginning. Uh, and this is where I went from 2013 with my side business um, up to where we were in 2019. Um, and in 2019, sold my counseling practice. I'm entirely online. None of this is counseling income anymore. And, and so I think the potential for income within podcasting is great. We're going to talk about how people do it wrong. And we're also going to talk about how people do it right. Um, but I want to start with that. This is not a get rich quicker webinar. Uh, this isn't going to be a quick overnight thing for you, but we're going to talk through strategies that really, really work in engaging an audience and growing a podcast. And so this is about how to understand your audience and launch solutions for that audience. So at the core of what I'm going to teach you tonight is that you want to fall in love with the pain and the people before you pitch a product. Fall in love with the pain and the people before pitching a product. And I'm going to dive into what exactly this means. But at its core, so many people will develop an e-course or they'll do all the video for it or they'll launch a whole membership community only to have nobody buy it. And you put in all this time, all this energy, all this dreaming and saying, oh my gosh, I could double my income if I do these things. And then you totally miss the people that you're serving and the pains that they're coming to you with. And there's a huge opportunity that you miss when you do that. So most people fall in love with the e-course, the book, the talk, the membership community uh, before they grow their audience. And, you know, we end up asking ourselves, you know, how did that really go? It usually goes terrible. Instead, we want to fall in love with the pain and the people. So here's exactly what we're going to cover today during this masterclass and have tons of time for Q&A. First, why podcasting is the best use of your time right now. Second, how most people do podcast launches and why that's totally wrong. And third, our three-step approach that's worked every time to monetize our podcast. And so this has been for launching membership communities, for launching done few services, every single time how we've sold it out. And I'm going to show you the exact formula. It's not going to be, you know, only if you buy, you get to see this formula. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it on your own starting tomorrow or tonight if you're super motivated. So by the end of this webinar, uh, you'll have a clear idea if a podcast is for you, um, your first steps, and you won't feel like it's crazy overwhelming. So to get the most out of this webinar, I would highly suggest putting your phone on airplane mode. You know, if you're meeting with a consulting client, if you were on a phone call with somebody, if you were doing other things, you probably would put your phone on airplane mode or turn it off. Well, you wouldn't turn off your phone if you're on a phone call, but uh, you know, you would turn it off so that you weren't um, distracted by other things. I would highly suggest you take notes, uh, pull out your phone and take pictures of these slides if you want. Um, and even more important, take action. There's a tendency to listen to podcasts, come to these webinars, go to master classes, but not do anything with this information. I highly suggest you set aside time tomorrow that you can take action from what you learned today. So let's start with the question, aren't there too many podcasts? Uh, there's so many podcasts that are out there if you're a podcast listener. Uh, and this is a question I get all the time. Like, you know, are there too many podcasts? You know, let me just show some stats. So in the last 12 months, 20 million people discovered podcasts for the first time. This is crazy to me that 20 million people just discovered podcasts. Um, I'll sometimes say to people, you know, have you listened to any podcasts recently? And they'll say, you know, what's a podcast? I'll say, on your phone, you have that podcast app. And I'll show it to them you know, when we didn't have coronavirus going on. And I'll say, it's right here. And they're like, I've never noticed that. So 20 million people. So 52% of the U.S. listens to a podcast at least monthly. We know that 40% are ages 54 and younger and listen regularly. And we know that when we look at household incomes, this is a very affluent group of people that are listening to podcasts right now. 93 of podcast fans listen to most of an episode, meaning that these are people that are highly engaged, where 54% of podcast listeners said they are more likely to consider buying an advertised product. 
So advertisers want to sponsor, even if you have a smaller podcast, they want to sponsor you because they know the ROI is huge for them compared to other ways. So think about it, 20 million new people spread out over 160,000 active podcasts. And active meaning that once a month or more, they're posting an episode. So that is a huge ratio. And we know that half of all new podcasts will fade within one year, usually after only 12 episodes. So when I'm thinking about return on investment, I'm looking for the biggest bang for my buck. Where can I put in the least amount of time to reach the most people with the fewest competition? So if we look at a few stats here, imagine blogs. So if a blog was a six foot tall person, we know there's 440 million blogs that are out there right now. Not blog posts, blog sites. So if that's a six foot tall person, let's look at the statistical difference between that and YouTube channels. 25 million YouTube channels. So that's a statistical difference of a six foot tall person and a 104 foot tall King Kong. Right, so a pretty big difference there. But then when we look at inactive podcasts, meaning that they've only posted one episode or more in the last 90 days, there's only 706,000 of those. So that's the equivalent of seven Titanics stacked on top of each other. So that's a huge statistical difference. Now, what about if they only posted once in the last 30 days well, we're looking at 126,000. So when we made this one, it's changed to now 160,000, so a little bit more, but the statistical difference is still Mount Everest. So do you wanna be Mount Everest or do you wanna be a six foot tall person? So I want you to be able to be where the ROI is best for your time and for your money because there's so few competitors that are out there in the podcasting world still. And when you're in the podcasting world, like Scott and I are in, Oftentimes it feels like there's so many podcasters, like these people are doing such cool things. I wish I could keep up with them. But the reality is it's a small group of people that are comparing themselves to each other instead of saying, hey, there's like a lot of space out there for all of us. So podcasting right now is the single best use of your marketing time, the largest audience with the fewest people serving those folks. But your message has to match your business's goals. Uh, and so I'm going to look at some case studies and show you some of our clients, how they've positioned themselves uniquely, because I think it's helpful to just see how do people actually live out this world a little bit differently. So imagine a case study of Skylar. Skylar owns a high-end lawn care business. She wants to expand into areas within 50 miles of where she currently operates. Um, and this is obviously outside of COVID and all that. So she's done some market research. Um, there's four communities with her target market. Is a podcast a good use of her time? Probably not because she'd want to focus on a local podcast audience to attract local clients for her local high-end lawn care business. So strong networking and marketing would be a better use of her time than doing a podcast. Uh, but she might want to start a different podcast, maybe how to start a high-end lawn care business. Uh, that could lead to some national consulting, e-courses, a membership community, maybe badass business women, um, good local networking and speaking, Maybe a book, Not Your Mom's Garden, focused on homeowners or e-courses. So she could take her skills and do a podcast that puts her more nationally. But if your only goal is to just get local people, a podcast isn't always going to be the best use of your time. And so you're going to want to either pivot into something that's more national, or you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to try some other things instead of podcasting. So here's how most people will do a podcast. So one group of people is the hobbyist. You know, I'm interested in it. Everybody else should be interested in this too. Um, I may get a large following, uh, but I'm gonna struggle to monetize it. So it might be that you do a podcast that's all about you know, backyard gardening and you don't really think about how am I gonna monetize this? Or uh, you may do it about a video game or a TV series. Unless you get a large following, those folks probably aren't gonna pay you anything. It's just gonna be more entertainment. The second type of podcast that a lot of people will do is the talker. They don't really have something to say. They don't really plan it out. They don't think through it. Um, they just want to say something. They want to have friends, you know, over and have a conversation. Or there might be the inventor. You know, they just spent five years writing the perfect curriculum and filming an e-course and spent all this money uh, and nobody even buys it. And they, they go into podcasts and trying to squeeze people into a product that nobody wants to buy. So that's how most people will do a podcast. And Scott, if questions come in, feel free to say, hey, Joe, let me pause you right there. I got a quick question here. Even if you have questions, um, by all means, we'll jump, jump in. Otherwise, I'm going to just proceed until apprehended. No problem. All right. So most podcasts, if you look at them, actually fall in this category. We know anywhere from only 5 to 10% of podcasts are actually making enough money to cover their expenses and pay their host. 
And so we want to make sure that we're really looking at, well, what about those five or 10% that are making tons of money that are doing a good job at it? What are they doing differently? Well, your ability to understand your people and their pains is the essential component when we look at monetizing a podcast. All right. So phase one is the pain transformation formula. So this is exactly what we teach our done for you podcasters that we help launch. Um, it's exactly what we teach in podcast launch school. It's what I've been teaching consultants for several years that I've been training people in launching their podcasts. So there's only two parts to this. What's the pain and what's the transformation? Whether you're looking at an email you're sending someone, a podcast you're recording, a pre-consulting call, we want to look at what's the pain and what's the transformation. It's literally it. Whether it's an email, a podcast, a webinar, everything, you want to think through what is the pain that we're addressing with this and what's the transformation. And so let's think about this. The typical podcaster doesn't think, what is the pain my audience is thinking about right now? Just today I had a consulting call with an artist in New York. Uh, that I met. And he's this amazing artist. He has a great podcast where he interviews artists and he's learning to monetize it more. And so as we were talking, uh, we were building out his business avatar. And I was saying to him, I think we named his uh, business avatar uh, Tiffany. And so I said, you know, Tiffany, what is Tiffany dealing with? Um, and he was saying how she feels guilty doing her art when she should be helping her kids, helping her husband, doing housework, doing all these different things. And she has, she needs permission. And he kind of skimmed over that. And I said, permission, think about that every time you go into a YouTube video, every time you go into something, instead of starting with, hey everybody, or hey guys, how you doing? Start with directly talking to Tiffany. You know what, maybe you had a really tough day today and you need some permission to do your art. Well, I wanna tell you that you deserve to do your art. And I'm sure the kids are you know, needy. I'm sure your husband may need some help. I'm sure that you, know, you have all this guilt around it, but right now is your time. And I wanna give you permission because what's gonna be that transformation when you give yourself permission to do the art that makes you come alive? Well, you're gonna be a better mom. You're gonna be a better person, a better wife. You're gonna feel more fulfilled. I mean, that changes the beginning of any YouTube video, of any podcast. If you start with what's some of that pain that you're dealing with? and talking directly to that person. So my first slide said, have you ever thought, is this all that I'm made for? What if I can reach more people or have a greater impact? Is this all I have in me? So what's the pain I'm addressing in this web webinar? It's tough to start a podcast, but even deeper, do I have something big that's deep inside of me? Uh, yeah, I was trained as a therapist, as a psychologist, working at a community college, but I knew there was something inside of me that I wanted to help people grow in a different way beyond just coming to one-on-one -on -one therapy. So what's the transformation at the beginning that I promised is that by the end of this webinar, you'll have a clear idea if your podcast, if a podcast is for you, your first steps, it won't feel overwhelming. You'll feel like you have a direction and it's not as hard as you think. So even when I plan something like this, I'm thinking through the pain and transformation formula. So this is the actual case study of Veronica. So Veronica Cisneros, she worked full-time in a hospital as a marriage and family therapist in California. She started a counseling group practice and she was now leaving that job. That's when she reached out to me. Um, as her practice began to grow, she saw that her skills really transcended individual counseling. And she saw the same pain and the same people over and over. It was women who were struggling to find themselves outside of their role as a mom and wife. So she started a community called Empowered and Unapologetic. Uh, she supports women through that community. She launched retreats and a podcast, and now that amplifies her message. And so our work with her was to develop that community, to develop that retreat, and to develop that podcast, to be a sales funnel around people that she's already really good working with. So her first retreat, she sold out. Uh, she sold it for, I think, $3,000 a person. I want to say she had 12 or 13 people that paid for that uh, before she even had her podcast. Uh, and so she grossed a ton of money through that. And she helped a bunch of women. My wife is actually the one that's leaning forward with the blonde hair second from the right, smiling at Veronica. She went to this retreat and she came back changed. I mean, she came back like ready to be unapologetic, which took a little bit of my uh, own deep breathing, but it was awesome. She came back saying, you know what? I'm empowered, I'm unapologetic. Here's the woman I'm called to be. And it took us a few months to figure out this new norm. And now she speaks up for what she wants. She says, you know what, I'm going to go read a book for two hours. And I say, okay, I'm glad you're saying what you want instead of asking permission or asking for me to say, what do you need, honey? She boldly steps into that. So 
uh, want to know how to launch a successful podcast that actually makes money, let's talk through this. Okay, so we're going to cover how to build an email course with the culture win habit formula. Then we're going to talk about launching the podcast with the three type formula. And then we're going to talk about discovering the audience's natural next steps and inclination with the three questions to launch. All right, so this is where we're headed. Okay, your email course, the culture win habit formula. Why do we do an email course when there's social media and podcasts and YouTubes? Well, we wanna have a place that we can send people that we can directly communicate with them. We know that people check their emails. We know that people take action from their emails if they're quality. A lot of my consulting clients will say, I hate emails that are all salesy and they're trying to get me to buy things. They email me over and over. I'm like, well then let's build an email series that you would actually want to open. What would you want? Well, I want something that's helpful that actually helps me grow in a new way. Well, then those are the emails we're gonna write. We're not gonna make these slimy emails that are just gonna get people to buy something. We're gonna do it in a way that's authentic to you. All right, so what we do is we break this down into three distinct sections. So the culture, these are the three reasons societies set you up to fail. So um, say you're someone that wants to help um, well, I'll just use like counselors. So I work with counselors a lot. Um, say it's somebody that helps individuals dealing with trauma. What is it in society that's not valued trauma? By the end of these first three, email, three emails, it, the, the general feeling is, wow, I was set up by society to fail. Uh, I can't believe this. Like I was set up. And so we're deconstructing society. Then we're going to say in the next three emails, all right, what are some small steps you can take to move in the right direction for you to be able to take some small steps? And then third group of emails are the habits that you have to master to grow. And so what this does is by having an email sequence that's not just a newsletter, it's not just updates, it's not jump into my email opt-in, but it's an email course where we look at what's the pain that someone joins this email course that they wanna achieve and transform through. Let's deconstruct society and culture let's get some quick wins, and then let's get some habits. So what does this look like? Uh, by the end, we want your clients to feel that they're understood and they understand why they are stuck and why they feel this way. They've been given small steps that challenge their way of thinking and believing, meaning that they're gonna trust you more because they've taken these small steps in the right direction. They said, whoa, I feel better after I followed these emails. And then when we look at the habits that move them towards long-term change, then they're gonna have even more trust with you and wanna do business with you. So why do we start with this email course? Well, it gives somewhere clear to point listeners on your show and when you're a guest. It also helps you refine your message and the transformation that you're offering through that. And you can model your first shows off of it. You can have your first couple of shows be modeled and go in, in line with this email course. So phase two is the three type formula. So after this, the goal of your first 15 episodes is to show yourself as an authority align with experts and show that you can help consulting clients to take action. All right, so these are the first 15 types of shows that we've seen help people launch their podcast quicker. And if you already have a podcast, you can go through these, these three steps in the five different shows uh, in the next 15 shows. So your first five shows, these are five pillar shows that are really the main pillars of your podcast. So if I was to ask Scott, you know, what are the things that you believe about your podcast that are going to stay true you know, from now for the next five years? What are those main pillars? He would probably pretty quickly be able to say, these are the five things that are just the pillars that everything else stands on. Um, Scott, if I say that to you, what sorts of things come to mind as the kind of pillars of your teachings on your podcast? So the biggest thing is that, A, you can buy notes direct from banks. You can note investing is uh it's definitely a niche but i think it's a much more profitable and exclusive way to invest in real estate and you can do this from anywhere with no money or no credit of your own would be a couple things definitely awesome so if scott was just starting a show we'd want to dissect what are those kind of five pillars and what are the things that he knows three to five years from now are going to still be core to his business so then it, using scott still as the example the five experts um, that would be that he's aligning himself with experts and would be, he would quickly be seen as an expert. So people that would be able to say, okay, these five pillars that he just talked about, those are core. Those really are legitimate. And what are the puzzle pieces that really go in there? So he might want to interview someone that does loans through a bank to say, yeah, you really don't need credit and you don't need a whole lot of capital to do this. And here's how it works. Here's some of the technical. 
Uh, he might talk with mm -hmm. other real estate investors. He might talk about other marketers. He might talk with all sorts of people within that note collecting world that can say, yeah, here's the perspective. Scott knows this stuff. He's aligned with these experts. But then the last five that a lot of podcasters met miss our live consulting shows. And this is really the gold of podcasting because imagine Scott meets with somebody uh, virtually and they do a 20 minute consulting call that he records and then plays on the podcast. The person of course is given their permission for that. And they say, you know, Scott, here's how much money I have. Um, here's what I'm thinking about. Like help me create a, a timeline for what I should do. How should I talk to my partner about this investment? What should my risks be? He, of course, you know, has talked to his attorney and, you know, make sure he qualifies it, you know, any loss or anything like that, you know, it's up to that person. But, you know, it then does a few things. That first five shows set Scott up as, I know something. I know a lot of things. I know what I'm saying. The five expert shows now align him with other experts that he's now in a higher playing field than maybe he started at the beginning of the podcast. But then the consulting shows answers the questions of the listener that says, D can Scott speak my language? Yeah, he can talk to experts, but can he teach me? So then when people feel that and they visualize themselves on those consulting shows with those questions that the average person has, they're more likely to sign up for mastermind groups, membership communities, e-courses, because they've then seen that Scott has something to say, he's aligned with experts, and then he also can communicate that to his consulting clients. So let's look at how this looks. So Catherine Ely. Joe, Joe, I, do, Joe I got a question for you. Yeah, Joe. jump on in. Joe, Seamus asks, is, what's the desirable time or how long should your first 15 episodes roughly be on average? For sure. Yeah, so a lot of the research shows that 30 to 45 minute shows right now are what really are um, kind of the most listened to shows. I do think there's shows like, you know, Joe Rogan's show that, you know, it's so popular and it's five hours long because he smokes pot and he forgets about time. Um, and it's like, so that may be skewing it longer when we're looking at the averages. Um, but I would recommend 30 to 40 minutes somewhere in there and posting at least weekly. Um, because, mm -hmm. and when you launch, you want to launch five episodes on day one. Uh, so that if someone likes episode one, they binge listen, they get a little bit addicted to it. And that makes your numbers look awesome in iTunes. Makes sense. Yeah. So Catherine Ely, she's one of our done for you consulting um, folks where we helped her launch her podcast. Um, she helps women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s uh, who've been really hard on themselves that maybe have had a role of being a mom and a wife, and they want to figure out what it means to live imperfectly outside of, outside of those roles. Uh, we built her her email course, and so she has the Blueprint to Thrive email course, uh, which is her opt-in. She has a beautiful I think 10 page workbook that people download at the front end that they can print out to go along um, with, with the individual emails. So here's her first five episodes. Um, she started with, with why, what, and how. So she kind of goes through all the why, what, and how of imperfect thriving. Uh, she then went into, are you satisfied with your life part one and part two, uh, where she goes through her eight domains that she's developed. She then went through the most important words to be using with yourself and then how to empty nest proof your intimate relationships. So these are her central episodes at the beginning where she says, these are the pillars I'm gonna stand on for a while. And then her interviews are aligned with experts who reinforce her skills. She's partnered with people like Interview Valet to find her high quality uh, interviews for free. Um, what's great is the podcast guests pay Interview Valet or other you know, booking services uh, to then get into shows like Catherine's. And then her consulting shows will focus on women that are her target audience. So they may be stuck in a specific area. All right, so phase through podcast launch. We're not gonna go through all of the tech because there's just so much to it and we're not gonna go through the exact tech, but we're gonna just go through some of the steps. So you're gonna upload your completed host episodes to your hosting. You're gonna create show notes, transcriptions, and images for each episode in the unique feed. You're gonna submit your show to iTunes, release five shows on the first day, and then release at least weekly and then have a review day within a week of launch. So a review day is where you get as many people from your audience to rate, review, and subscribe on one day. So in the past, people would say the first six weeks are the most important. But right now what's happening is if you can get all those people within about a 24 hour period, iTunes for some reason right now likes that better than other things. Now, if you have an established podcast and you haven't done a review day in a while, it's a great way to get a nice bump in your listens. So shoot for 50 to 100 reviews uh, in one day. 
most of our podcasters are getting between 100 and 150 reviews on their review day. Uh, and that's really helping them with their numbers. So here's some numbers that you want to watch. Um, you want to, within six months, have at least 1,000 listens per episode and at least 100 people in your email course before you start monetizing. Uh, and if you can get to that 100 people in your email course, that's really the number that I care about the most, more than the listens per episode. Because that's at least 100 people who have said, I want to learn more from you and I'm ready to take those next steps. So they're saying, I have a pain and help me out, please. All right. Phase four, the three questions to launch. So the goal of this phase is to, <coughs> excuse me, to explore the products that help your people and their pain. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach out to those hundred people on your email list. Uh, you may have a Facebook community. You may have a different community in addition to that. And just say something like, uh, I would love to jump on a phone call with you for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, what I'm trying to do is figure out the first product that I should launch uh, to help you take those next steps. This is not a sales call. It is literally me asking you questions to try to figure out the best type of product for me to put my time into. So the first question you're going to ask on that phone call is what's it been like to, and then fill in the blank. And so for Scott, it might be, what's it been like to, to buy notes or to consider investing in general? Uh, and then he's getting the copy from people that are his ideal client. So they might say, you know, investing's confusing. I don't want to waste my money. I don't, you know, I work really hard for this money. I have an extra few hundred dollars and I don't know if I can even invest with that money. I have medium credit. So people are then telling him, here's how we describe our pain of how confusing investing is. Second question is, is there, if there was a magical perfect product that would fix that pain, what would it be? And you're going to then reflect back. So, you know, if someone said to Scott, uh, investing is so confusing and I don't know if I have enough money. Um, if he then said back to that person, you know what, uh, it can be really confusing uh, to invest, uh, to even know how much money goes into it. If there was a magical product that helped you with that, whether it's an e-course, membership, community, consulting, mastermind, something else, what would that be? And what would be some of the features of it? And then lastly, you'd ask, how much would you pay for that product? If there was this magical product that meant everything that you just said, like what would be the price that you would pay or the range that you would pay? See, the value of doing this process is that you then are able to develop the product for your clients. I remember I was launching our membership community, Next Level Practice. I did this exact formula with around 20 people that were starting counseling private practices. In my mind, I thought, okay, I have a $17 one-time fee, one-year practice plan that people had bought into. The next step up maybe is 30 bucks a month. That's a big step. You know, that's, you know, 300 some dollars a year, $360 a year. You know, if it was 20 bucks a month, you know, more than that, you know, if it's 30 or 40, uh, but that's a big step from just a one-time $17 fee. So in my mind, I was thinking 20 to 30 bucks or so a year. Um, and so, you know, I'm thinking that that's probably the range that I want to be. Well, then as I was interviewing people in the second one, when they were done talking about how confusing it was to start a practice, uh, they said, you know what we would love is access to a bunch of e-courses. We want some live events. Uh, we want to have some experts. We want to have small groups. We want accountability partners. We want a free logo. Uh, want to have a paperwork packet. Uh, want to have a private Facebook group. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, there's no way for, you know, 20 to 30 bucks a person per month. I can pull all that off. And then when I got to the end, I said, how much would you pay for that? And they said, easily 70 to $100 a month. And I thought, really? All the other things that are out there right now are in the 20 to 30 range. All the other membership communities that help people with their practice. So you're saying you would pay two to three times more than what I was thinking. And if I gave you more, it would be totally worth it. So what did I do? I then reached out to those people that I just had done the phone call gave a summary. I talked to 20 of you. Here's what I heard are your biggest pains. Here's what most of you are saying you would love. Here's the price range. Will you just reply with an email that says, yeah, that sounds awesome. And I'll add you to the very first list and you'll get to come in at a lower rate than everyone else. We now have 450 people last time I checked that are paying anywhere from 77 to $99 per month, depending on when they came in as a cohort. And so that's bringing in a significant amount of money every month as a recurring membership that I would have totally left money on the table had I not done these calls. Okay, so it's the exact way that we also launched our done for you podcasting services. We did the three questions to launch with our highest end clients. Uh, they said, 
honestly, Joe, we would love for you to just launch a podcast for us instead of doing an e-course or something like that. We sketched out that initial offering back to the people I had just interviewed. We pre-sold our done for you services at Killing It Camp, which is a live event we do in October to our consulting clients and our current clients. And we set a very high price point at it. Then once that money came through, we hired our sound engineers after the money came through. We launched our own podcast first to work out the kinks. So we launched new podcasts for ourselves to test out before the done for you services. And then we added value beyond what we had offered on the front end and do monthly Q and A's in addition to it. So this is how we sketch it out to the people that are saying, Hey, done for you services. Like what's that look like? How much it would cost to launch your own podcast. If you outsourced everything, it'd be almost $40,000. So this is what we offered our done for you people. We offered them 26 episodes up to 30 minutes each within nine months. We have that podcast interview structure, training, swipe files for email, sponsorship, monetization strategy, sponsors, affiliate links. They get nine 45 minute consulting sessions with me. We build their full opt-in and tested automatic email course. And then they get text and phone support when they're stuck. They get a sound engineer that walks through it with them. So when we launched this, we sold it out right away using the exact formula I just showed you. And so this is the investment that we have them pay $18,000 pay in full or $4,900 every nine weeks. And so we have this whole team now of sound engineers, designers, copywriters, show notes, coordinator, transcriber, feed manager, because we walked through asking our people exactly what they wanted. Now, obviously, you know, you're not here to drop 18 K on launching a podcast. But I did want to let you know about Podcast Launch School. And Scott, thank you so much for giving me permission to talk a little bit about this today because yeah. um, I'm so excited about it. We launched it in April. Uh, we've got such great feedback from our first cohort. Um, and actually, Scott, you don't know this. You're our first partner outside of our own audience that we've launched this to. So today is our first outside of our own audience uh, launch and opening. So thanks for letting me nice. have you be the first. <laughs> I'm glad to be here, man. Glad yeah. to have you. And that's the thing is, we talked a little about this back in Orlando and I, I, I reached out to you immediately. There's a listen, I'd love to have you on when you get this all set up and rock and rolling. Cause I know, you know I learned so much from you, uh, you know, over the last year, especially your three-step approach. You're talking about the, the five, the five and the five of the 15 episodes. Yeah. Such great stuff there. I was like, let's definitely have you on here. It's such a game changer. And that's, what's so exciting about it for us is, you know, my background in psychology really has kind of come right into that world of podcasting where we've been testing this enough with our own world and then testing with our consulting clients that now we can say to the general public, this course is just a game changer for the podcasting world. Um, so this course is going to give you the exact outline of that psychological step-by-step -step formula we use to get a 60 to 80% open for all of our emails, to connect with that pain, to help with your clients, to guide them, um, to solve their problems. Remember, it's that pain in the people before you pitch the product. We're going to then also walk you through that three type formula uh, of those first 15 episodes, the podcast launch, the three questions to launch. So this course right now is going for $9.97, but you get a discount through Scott. Um, and this week it's only nine, seven, or I'm sorry, seven ninety seven. dollars Actually, it was going to be eight ninety seven, but we had some errors with our, our stuff. So we just took an extra $100 off. Um, so it was going to be uh, just eight ninety seven, but we gave your audience, Scott, an extra hundred bucks off. Um, so this week it's, it's only- the, that's, the, that's the pandemic discount, right? <laughs> it is the pandemic discount, absolutely. Uh, but I want to just um, talk about some strings uh, because to me, I think it's important when we give a discount um, to say this is a, a give and take. And the first one is that we launched this in April and we have done our very best to try to nail every aspect of it. Um, but- we know that we've missed the mark in some areas that, that there's going to be areas people have questions. So we want you to tell us after you buy this, if we missed something that needs work that you'll tell us that, um, and we'll then create things that will enhance the program even more. Second, that you'll give us a testimonial if we earn it, uh, because this is something that we've been offering first to our own consulting clients. Uh, we then had 70 some people, um, start this course in April. Uh, we're continuing to make it better and better. Uh, but if we are doing a good job, we want those testimonials. And lastly, um, that we can promote the heck out of you when you launch your podcast. We want to be able to, to promote the heck out of you so that you can get a bigger following right away. So if that sounds good, we'd love for you to sign up. Uh, but we have some bonuses, Scott, that we actually are throwing in in addition to that. 
Uh, the first one is, is that when you launch your podcast, we'll mention it on my podcast, which gets uh, over 100,000 listens a month. Uh, and so we will do a shout out and say, hey, this new podcast, one of our podcast launch schoolers just launched their podcast, search this in iTunes. Um, so we're going to be doing that for you as one of the bonuses. Second is we're going to do two live Q&As with me, one in May and one in June, um, so that once you get started, uh, if you have questions, you'll have that live help. If there's things that you're stuck on, things that you just, maybe the, the teaching was good, but you're just like, I don't know what to do here. It'll help you break through that with this current cohort. And then bonus number three, you get lifetime access. And so typically this is only a 90 day access for that 997 and you got to, that's a way to get people to go through it quickly. Um, but we're going to give you guys lifetime access to it today uh, and this week as part of our bonuses. So that for that 797, you get podcast launch school course, you get the mention on the podcast, the two live group Q and A's and lifetime access, which is the total value of 4,697 for only 797. But Scott, I was texting with you right before this, and I just threw this in here. Yeah. You have done an additional bonus. And so practiceofthepractice.com forward slash Scott, that's where you can sign up. Open that tab right now so you have that open for even after we're done with Zoom. So Scott is adding an additional $599 in value of a 30-minute coaching call with Scott and his monetization checklist, which uh, when you texted that, I was blown away that you were giving that away in addition to what I was doing. So that raises that value to a $5,296 value. Um, we've never offered this for $797 and had all these things in it. Um, so $797, that's going to be through Friday that this group, you have access to it. Highly suggest you jump on it uh, right away. But we also, because we know it's pandemic time, we did have a, uh, there was going to be interest for our payment plan. So if, if you're in a spot where you can't pay that upfront amount, of the 797, we want you to be able to spread that out. And so you can pay $97 nice. today, and then in a month it'll pull out 350, and in another month it'll pull out 350 again. So literally for $97 today, you can get this course, get immediate access to Podcast Launch School, take your podcast to that next level right away. I wanted to walk you through real quick the curriculum, and then we'll take some questions. I um, would love to hear who's gonna be signing up. So if you know you're signing up, um, put that in the chat so Scott and I can give you a shout out, uh, maybe give you a little extra attention as well. Um, so these are the modules. There's uh, videos within every single module. You have the overview of podcast launch school, identifying the best audience, um, some of the tools like your mic recording, um, those helpful tools. But then we're kind of backing up and saying, yeah, you can buy all this equipment, but let's really think through that culture win habit formula. Then we're going to talk about staying organized with your show notes and interviews, recording tips, then we're going to move into those solo shows and the pillars of your podcast. Uh, we have a podcast show cheat sheet, excuse me, for you. Then module seven, moving into those expert shows. How do you reach out to experts? Uh, we actually got interviewing techniques. Um, Interview Valet did a video that they've released nowhere else that is included in this on how to be a good guest and attract good guests on your show, which is just awesome that they did that for us. Then your consulting shows. Next, finding podcast sponsors. This year, we're going to do over 100K in just podcast sponsors. So we give you the exact email script that we use in our Practice of the Practice Sponsor Kit. So you can see exactly how we structure it, even though we're only getting 100,000 downloads per month. Um, back when we were getting around 1,000 or 2,000 per episode, we still were making over $500 per episode with our sponsorships. So those people yeah. that say, for every 1,000, you only get 30 bucks, Throw that out the window because it's absolutely untrue if you have the right audience in one spot. Here's yeah, so of, true, Joe. So true. It, it is. And I feel like when people hear that, they get discouraged. They're like, wait, for a thousand people, I only get $30. Um, but honestly, um, the easiest way to monetize a podcast is your own work. And then sponsorships, affiliate links, those are all going to come second. We walk you through how to pick out good music, editing the show, um, where to host it, how to host it, how to upload it. Uh, creating show notes, uh, affiliate links, all of that, submitting your feed. We walk you exactly through how to do review day, how to get all those people excited about it. And then we go past where most launch schools stop. And that's how do you market the first six weeks of your podcast? And then we even mm -hmm. in module 19, walk you exactly through that three questions to launch to actually start to monetize your podcast with membership e-courses and consulting. So we go so much farther before and after your typical podcast launch uh, type of course. So I'm going to land this plane right now for a little bit and then we'll take questions. But I want to go back to that thought of, is this all that I'm made for? What if I can reach more people? 
Scott, I know podcasting's changed your life. I know it's changed my life. And I can't even think about if I hadn't done this thing, what my life would be like. You know, something was calling me towards more innovation, influence, and impact. And actually something that I, I didn't have even, I didn't even know when I gave you, Scott, that bio was that HarperCollins just purchased my book. And so I'm going to be published through HarperCollins uh, with people like Donald Miller, Rachel Hollis, um, and other really great authors. Um, and so that's specifically because of my podcast. They said that was one of the things that they really looked at that made them want to buy my book. So that's now, awesome, man. Congratulations. I, you know, it's, it, I've been working on it for a while and I'm really excited about it. And, you know, when you have that audience, um, it's so much easier to level up in those other areas. So now's that moment to make that decision about joining us with Podcast Launch School. Do you want to talk to top authors, guests, and attract a whole new clientele? To me, and I know Scott can reiterate this, that podcasting absolutely has given us access to people we probably have no business talking to. Um, and it's so great to be able to talk to a lot of the, these top influencers and connect with them. Um, so now's the time to decide these bonuses will disappear on Friday. Um, uh, this webinar, uh, we're going to be signing off pretty soon here. Um, but again, that's practiceofthepractice.com forward slash Scott. That's going to bring you to a landing page and you can sign up for that at $7.97 or do that zero interest uh, plan. Uh, so sign up over at practiceofthepractice.com forward slash Scott. And if you're going to be joining us, did you sign up? Put, put yes in the chat so we can say hello to some of our newest podcast launch schoolers. Uh, but let's take some some questions now. Yeah, question I, I always like to say is when you look at 797, thinking about, I always break it down like, okay, how many people do I need to have in a membership site? Like for that, that's like eight people paying $97 a month, which is nothing right. if, you're, if you're working out there or if you're saying 49 bucks, okay, that's 16 people. We all have uh, uh, something inside of us, our super, I guess you call it our superpower to help and help solve problems across the board, no matter what people are dealing with, right, Joe? Yeah, and I think that a lot of times people say like, who am I, like, what do I have to say? Um, you know, Scott, you and I, I'm sure if you and I talked about any tacos, we would have a much different perspective on tacos. If we talked <laughs> about marketing online, we would have very different perspectives about marketing online. And so even if there are podcasts out there that are already about what you are interested in, Honestly, your perspective, your history, your stories, your failures are going to make you stand out in a way that's totally different from the rest of the crowd. Right. Lori asked the question, what if you've already started a podcast on your own? Should you go back and, and start a new one or can you go back and fix your new one with new 15 episodes? What's, what, what's your opinion on that, Joe? Yeah, you know, um, for people that have a podcast that they aren't terribly happy with, um, I would say doing a relaunch of that same feed, unless it's terribly different. I mean, if you were Skylar, that case study from earlier on doing a lawn care one, and you're moving into a women's weightlifting one, yeah, you probably want to switch it up. But if it's loosely connected, even if you have a couple hundred people that are listening or subscribed to that old podcast, you can change the name of your podcast. You can change you know, a lot of the, the website, the feed and not lose those people. Um, so I'd say if it's remotely connected to your old podcast, I'd keep the podcast, but I'd rename it. I would redo um, you know, the, the 15 first episodes, treat it as if it's a brand new launch. Um, the only real advantage is that um, if you launched a new one, um, you may have a chance of getting a new and noteworthy, but more and more new and noteworthy is being reserved for celebrities and people that yeah. um, just have a gigantic audience already. It used to be that the average person really had a chance to get in there, but honestly, the odds, it's, it's like the lotto. Like you may hit it, but you're probably not gonna. Yeah. Boyd asked the question, when you showed your chart of your income from your podcast, would do, can you break that down a little bit? What kind of split is, uh, is part of the, obviously a big part of that, your membership, part of it's maybe your one-on-one. -on -one. Do you know the breakdown of that now? I, you know, I just talked to my accountant yesterday. I don't have the exact numbers, but I have the general numbers. Um, yeah. We only spend about 20% on any of our expenses or so. Um, so that, that was the gross revenue. So of the, say, 600000 or so that was left from last year, um, I would say a good third of that is our membership community. Uh, nice. When we launched our Done For You services, you know, we had eight people come in at the $18,000. Um, so that was nice. significant. Um, we probably do two to $4,000 in affiliates every month. 
Um, I do have my monthly income um, that you can go look at on practice by practice just under the monthly income where I really break it down. Um, I stopped doing it about six months ago because I wanted to just see it, how many people would complain and very few people complained and it was a ton of work for that blog post. And so I just thought, well, if nobody's reading it, I'm not going to do it anymore. So up till I think June of 2019, it's live there. Um, we, we also, um, my, I have three other consultants that do run mastermind groups that run individual consulting. Um, and so, you know, part of that income is through those. Um, we actually, it might be helpful for me to just talk about every kind of product we have throughout so you can see the spectrum. Our thought is that, uh, you know, if someone's just starting a counseling practice, we have tons of free things. So that's going to help them with the, all of our free content. Our Tripwire is a $17 uh, email course that it's for a year. It's called the One Year Practice Plan. They get a weekly email on how to set up a counseling practice for a year. The next step up from that is our membership community. That's $99 a month, and that opens three times a year or so. Um, that's called Next Level Practice. Uh, and so uh, people can get on the wait list, and then when we open it, we usually have anywhere from 70 to 100 people join um, you know, for that mm -hmm. each time. The next step up from that are mastermind groups that my consultants run for me. Those run anywhere from $400 to $600 per month. So I get uh, a large percentage of that money that comes in that they run those for. Uh, the next step up from that would be one-on-one -on -one consulting with my consultants. Uh, the step up from that would be one-on-one -on -one consulting with me. And then the step up, and those packages go for usually $1,500 a month or so with a six to nine month um, range that people will opt in for. Six months is the minimum I'll do uh, individual consulting with people just because I want to dig in for a while. Right. Uh, and then ab above that would be uh, our done for you podcasting, which is the $18,000 if you do the painful. Nice. I mean, it's a good, it's a good mixture. You got price points and demand on, on what uh, kind of the customer journey. They start off there yeah. and they get rock and roll and go from there. I, I like the fact you're talking about your case study uh, with your client that did the, uh, the mastermind, the 3000, uh, per person mastermind they had it for 12 people i think a lot of people get kind of intimidated thinking about putting a mastermind together anything they need to have 50 to 100 people and i think the intimate ones will actually work a lot better huh yeah and, and then you you can say okay i need to have three people come to make you know enough money to make it for me to put on a weekend thing to rent an airbnb or something like that when we're back to doing in-person events and then you can say okay i have, I have um a new consulting client uh, for a thousand dollars, you can come to this three thousand dollar event. Maybe that's what your costs are, and so then you can get more people to come. So I put on an event in the summer called Slowdown School. We'll have anywhere from twenty to thirty people come to it. So the full price, if people pay and they've never done consulting with me or anything else, is forty nine hundred dollars. So we'll get four or five people that'll pay that, and then people that have done mastermind groups with me, one on one consulting, I may include it in their package. So they then are paying it over six to nine months. I may say, you know what, for $2,000, you can come because I know my cost is just under $1,000. So I'm making $1,000 off of them. But, you know, I then can say, when these people come, I know that they're going to be engaged. They're also going to be the best salespeople for me because they'll say, oh yeah, I did Joe's mastermind group. And then I did his one-on-one -on -one yeah. consulting and now I'm here and I've done this. And these other people that paid the full price, they're going to say, I need to do that. I need to join one of Joe's groups. Everyone here seems to be in Joe's mastermind and doing consulting with him. I'm one of the only ones that's not. Like, how did I get in here? I need to jump in there. And so you want your highest end clients to be the ones that are at your events. And so if you can give them a discount to come, they're going to be advocating for you without any you know, payment for it because they've got the results. Makes a lot of sense there. It definitely makes a lot of sense there because they're your... Biggest cheerleaders out there because they're your biggest fans because you help them with so much and things out there. So, yeah. what are the questions you guys have uh, for Joe before we let him get back to dinner? Uh, or you already had dinner? Who knows? <laughs> I did. I did have dinner before this. I'm gonna. I, I think my daughters are already in bed. Uh, I think my wife put them to bed, and so we're gonna probably watch some Vikings or something like that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, good stuff there. Well, well then, Joe, we'll let you get get back to your family in the evening. But thank you so much for coming. On. Guys, take Joe up on what he's offering here. I mean, the, 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 the three pay plan, 97 to start off with, and then the 350, 350, that's a phenomenal deal there to get in, see if it's a fit for you, and help you with your budgeting and go from there. Otherwise, the, the bonus he's offering, man, you're packing a huge amount of punch in there for what you're offering up there for everybody out there. Real, I mean, your email campaign that you shared with us at, at uh, PodFest is worth that alone and helping people really – yeah, people, yeah, we hadn't launched it at PodFest and like that whole mastermind group with Matt and Joe, they were like, uh, 
can we get that now? Can we get that now? Yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm sorry. We, we just finished recording, but I, I wanted to launch it to my people first to get feedback and make sure it was like as, as powerful as we thought it was. And, and we, we've heard nothing but awesome feedback from the people that have been going through it. Yeah. And, and, and I love the fact is that people will make decisions based on uh, saving time and money, but or pain points. Think about what pain point you want to solve. And every, everybody that's on here who's listening to us, whether it's live or watching the replay, we all have a tribe that looks to us, that follows us, that's dealing with pain points. Now, some people have a lot more pain points right now with everything going on. But in the practice, pain points, how do you set things up? Uh, people getting laid off work. Hey, how do you find income? Or how do you transition from being a W-2 to a 1099 employee? Or how do you transition from a job to being a real estate investor? Or, or, there's everybody has pain points and everybody has knowledge. You might as well get in the word out. You might as well be that Everest versus being a six foot tall little person out there and having a bigger impact in the world. Right, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's like, go where there's no competition. I mean, there's hardly anyone podcasting statistically still, which blows my mind when I dig into those stats, I'm still amazed. Uh, and so be one of those first adopters. It's, it's still the early days of podcasting and, you know, now almost 500 episodes in, you know, it's, it's amazing how once you're seen as one of those influencers that's been around a while, people fall off and they stop doing podcasts. And those people that you thought were kind of these people that would always do it, you know, eventually you're standing there by yourself and you're the one. That's the truth. That's the truth. Well, Joe, thanks for coming on the Mass Media Podcast, Mastermind Series tonight, man. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule there. Uh, good to see you. Look forward to catching up yeah. with you in person at some point again sometime soon. All right, Joe? Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, bud. All right, guys, it's going to wrap it up for this evening. Uh, take advantage of the special. The link is in the chat roll there for you. Uh, if you're watching the replay, the link will be actually in the description below uh, on the YouTube video there. Take advantage of it. Trust me, Joe's a phenomenal guy. Got a phenomenal team doing amazing things. Uh, let's make you a success story. If you've ever wanted to get started or like, ah, crap, I'm trying to figure this out on my own. Trust me, seven nice seven is a whole lot cheaper to have somebody that's done a great job, done amazing things. Who, who, who doesn't want to learn from somebody who's making 800 plus grand a year in revenue from their podcast? That's why I loved having Joe on. I learned a couple things and I'm looking forward to the tips that uh, he taught tonight and some of the ideas he's sharing as well too. So go out, take some action, everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all at the top. Bye.